In this introductory lecture, I want to talk about why we study geotechnical engineering as civil engineers. Well, most civil engineering projects require geotechnical engineering expertise. And I want to go over some examples today that show where geotechnical expertise is, is required. And the first is foundations for buildings. Uh, what I'm drawing here is a multi-story building. All buildings that uh, we design uh, are supported by foundations that transmit the structural loads to the earth below. As geotechnical engineers, we need to determine what type of foundation should be used to support the structure. Uh, we could use either shallow foundations or another type of foundation we could use as a deep foundation. The type of foundation we recommend to support a structure will depend upon the structural loads that are being transmitted to the earth, as well as the soil strength and soil compressibility. The soil strength, if the soil is not strong enough, the foundation will, will fail, uh, undergo extreme deformations. As well, if the soil is really compressible or too compressible, the foundation will, will settle and that will cause problems with the serviceability of the structure. This second example involves earthwork. Most civil engineering projects involve some type of earthwork. What we have here is sloping ground conditions. That brown line, the sloping ground, is the initial site conditions. And the green line is the final site grade. That's what I want my grade, the ground condition, to be like for my new office building and parking lot that I'm going to have on the site. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to have to cut some soil away and, and then I'm going to have to place some fill. The yellow line shows where I've placed, the yellow hash marks show where I've placed my fill in order to achieve site grade. And part of the site I've over excavated uh, and so that uh, I have appropriate foundation conditions for my structure. Um, and in addition to the cut, I'll place a retaining wall at the site in order to, to achieve the site grade with the um, constraints I have for my site. As geotechnical engineers, uh, we will uh, determine how dense the compacted fill needs to be. Uh, we will determine you know, how deep we need to excavate um, below final site grade in order to provide appropriate foundation conditions. So again, a lot of work here that needs to be done by geotechnical engineers. This third example is uh, engineered slopes. Uh, this example involves a slope near a roadway embankment where our highway is, is placed. Oftentimes, uh, after construction uh, of a roadway uh, in mountainous terrain, we end up with some type of slope failure. The red line that I've drawn shows the, such the failure surface um, where movement is occurring, where the mass of soil is moving along that surface. And then this green line that I've drawn in is my attempt at drawing uh, the soil surface after the, the mass of soil has moved. So when a, a soil uh, slope, when a slope fails, uh, we'll then go in as geotechnical engineers and uh, evaluate the soil strength, determine why did the slope fail, uh, was it due to water infiltration, and then we'll design some sort of system to uh, prevent the slope from, from failing again in the future. Maybe we change the site grade, we insert some type of drainage, um, or we do some type of reinforcement inside the embankment so that that slope doesn't fail in the future. So a lot of geotechnical uh, expertise required to deal with engineered slopes. This last example is an earth dam. So modern earth dams 
uh, are zone dams, which means that they have a internal core, which is uh, drawn in with the green section, and then a shell area. There are some other zones within within these modern earth fill dams as well, but for simplicity, I'm only showing the core and the shell. One of the main objectives of the dam is to impound water, so we want to have a reservoir behind it. We are wanting to make sure that we have material on our dam that has low hydraulic conductivity so that a lot of water is not moving through the dam because we want to retain that water. And that's what the core is for. So we are going to design that to have a low hydraulic conductivity. So it's going to be clay-like material. Uh, and then we have the shell material um, outside the core. The clay material isn't, uh, isn't the strongest material, so the shell provides additional strength, adds stability to the dam. So again, we're worried about hydraulic conductivity and water flow through the dam. Uh, we will, uh, uh, in, in regards to the water flowing through the dam, uh, one of the things we're concerned about is the water flowing through too fast, has water uh, having a high hydraulic gradient, and that can lead to internal erosion of the earth material inside the dam. So we want to characterize the fluid flow through the dam, and we need to understand what the hydraulic conductivity is of the materials that are in the dam to do that. And that's the last example I have uh, for uh, uh, where uh, and how uh, we are doing geotechnical engineering. So one of the things we are going to do in this course is, uh, and what's important for each of these examples we looked at, is to characterize the engineering properties of soil. Some of these engineering properties are uh, what we call volume change. So how compressible is the soil? And that's what would lead to uh, foundation settlement. We have um, the potential for soils to expand. And so we have uh, expansive soils. Uh, an example of that would be a clay type material as water infiltrates and, and the moisture content increases. Um, we can get expansion of that clay, which can cause all sorts of problems for uh, structures if they're built on top of that expansive soil. In addition to expansive soils, we also have soils that can uh, collapse uh, when water infiltrates into them. So they're supporting the structure fine due to water infiltration. Uh, the soil uh, collapses and therefore we end up with problems in our structure. So we're concerned about volume change uh, and the potential for volume change in our soils. Uh, we're also concerned about hydraulic connectivity. We just recently talked about that dam example, and that's an example where we're concerned about characterizing the hydraulic connectivity of the soil. There are many other examples where that's important as well. And then finally, uh, one of the engineering properties that we're uh, interested in is the shear strength of soil. Um, this is important for the example we talked about earlier in, with our slopes uh, and slope stability. We need to be able to characterize the strength of our soil to determine uh, whether or not the uh, slope uh, is expected to fail or not. We need to characterize the sure strength of soil to design foundations to support buildings. We need to know what the sheer strength of the soil is in order to determine the design retaining walls and determine the loads that are going to be applied to retaining walls. So throughout the course, uh, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the semester as we study geotechnical engineering, ultimately we're going to be trying to determine what the engineering properties of the soil are so that we can um, perform geotechnical engineering design. With that, uh, we'll conclude this first introductory uh, lecture.